Hello, I'm Ashlyn, and um, I just wanted to kind of come and talk about my collegiate experience as an um, athlete. And I, I had a unique one. I, I got to play softball on a softball scholarship, and then I also had the opportunity to do track and field. And my story kind of starts out with before I went to college, I had ended up and I, I remember the day it happened, getting something called the yips. And for those of you who don't know what that is, um, it's kind of a performance anxiety. And it just, I guess to put it in perspective, it, it's where those moments where there's a lot of thinking that can take place. And it's very predominant in golf and then baseball, softball, and just some of those sports where there's a lot of um, time and I guess for even to put it in an even better uh, understanding, basketball. Say when you get the ball and you're dribbling and then you go up for the layup, there wasn't much thought. That was just kind of you reacting and your skill, your skill set. But whenever you're shooting a free throw and it's real quiet and you got a lot of time to think, um, that's uh, a lot of time for your mind to take over. And in softball, I was a catcher. And when you get that ball, I have that time to think and then throw it back to the pitcher because it's just real slow movement. That's not a big reaction unless someone's stealing on you. Well, when it first started, um, I had got the ball and I threw it right over my pitcher's head to center field. I was like, what? And then I got the ball again. Now she pitched it. I threw it right in the dirt and I'm thinking whoa and I'm starting to feel something I'm like what's going on and one more time a wild throw now I got parents in the back I hear this dad specifically get it back to the pitcher what are you doing he's on our team and I'm looking at my coach like what's going on and I, I ended up getting taken out I'm so confused I'm feeling super weird I'm all in my head and my coach says, I, I think I know what's going on. Um, this is called the yips. And that word tastes like poison coming out of my mouth, to be honest. But, um, and I was like, what is that? And he kind of explained it. Well, it was off and on, very, didn't really, didn't really play a huge part at that point in my life. Um, I was best at softball, it was all the sports I played, so I thought it would get me the farthest. So that ended up being the sport I chose, regardless of the circumstances that were going on. I it didn't really affect me too much. Well, I get to college and um, it starts progressing. And there was a, a real good catcher ahead of me. So she caught a lot of the games and I DH, which is designated a uh, hitter. And it was real cool. I had a great freshman year and really enjoyed it. Got to just hit and my mind was good. And whenever I did have to catch, I would manage because really it was just in the games um, and not in practices. Well, it started getting worse. It just started happening um, a lot more. It would happen in front of other teams when I'm at home and the people continually watch me play. When there'd be people come and watch, it would just take over my mind. And I can sit here and say that it was probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to deal with in my entire life. There was so many tears. I'm talking sit down in the shower and just let the water hit you type of tears twice a week. And just asking God, why? I'm a great softball player. I, I, I have all this skill that you gave me. Why, why are you doing this? What's going on? I read all the books. I, you know, envisioned, I, I would, lock myself in dark places and just would envision myself doing the things that I needed to do. And I, the skill, the easiest skill that I needed to do to perform my job as a catcher is taken away or I feel out of control in every, before every practice and before every game, I would have to go to war with my own mind. And it was hard. It was it was really hard, and I had a lot of great people in my life that never once did I make me feel 
like a burden or anything probably just pitied me because it was sad and it's hard to explain it's probably hard to understand but um God kind of turned that around for me so after my two years there it had kind of gotten worse they moved me out to right field uh, a lot less throwing this and that still it did affect me move out to Arizona and I had a real, I was blessed with a real great coaching staff who in the end just wanted the best for Ashland, nothing else. And because of that um, mindset that they helped me get, I wanted to just do my best for them. At this point, it was getting bad and I told my team, look, I may not be able to do certain drills or be able to participate in certain games but the things that I can control, I'm going to do the best I can. So I made it a point to be the fastest um, runner I could be. I, I became a great base runner. I lifted a lot. I tried, to, I tried to lift really heavy and just really push and be the best cheerleader I could be for other people, be the best leader that I could be in the things that I could control because I just felt out of control in that area. Well, my coach at Arizona – remembered that I had threw shot uh, shot put and disc in high school which is kind of funny because I don't even remember why I would have told her that but I did and I, I was fairly good and she's like why don't you uh, go with the track team to Santa Barbara for conference they have a lot of injuries the coach reached out that probably says how small the school is but um why don't you try this? And I was like, you know what? That's a free trip to Santa Barbara. I can get away from softball for a few days and not feel like I'm battling 24-7. So I ended up going. I had one or two practices, and I ended up taking sixth place at conference for them. And that really impressed the coach, the, the track and field coach. And he went ahead and kept up with me uh, the rest of the year over the summer and offered me a track scholarship that beat my softball one by a lot. And I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. I never would have imagined myself doing track and field my last year of my entire athletic career. And um, my softball coach understood, again, she really just wanted the best for my future and she knew the reason I was there she knew the reasons that I was using sports as my resource to get my education and and that's really what it came down to so I went ahead and accepted that scholarship and I tried to do both but it didn't really work I was also putting myself through um, college as far as paying rent bills I had jobs and internship it was just too much so I ended up just doing track and field but I kind of look at that situation as I didn't quit on softball. I, I mean, I had felt like softball quit on me, but I didn't quit because I made it to the point, I made it to the end for God to open up a new opportunity for me. He said, look, I'm going to repay you for um, your dedication and hard work. That for three and a half years. Sorry. <laughs> I've never admitted this publicly. <laughs> Gotta cut this out. For, um, thank you. Three and a half years, you went to battle. You, I never cursed God's name. I asked him why, but I never, you know, cursed his name or turned from God. And he said, because of your loyalty and your faith, I'm going to have you win this war. So I did not quit. I made it. I made it to the end. And, um, golly. That journey set me up for who I am today. That mental toughness that I had to endure for so long that I don't, I don't know. Uh, that, that a lot of people could, because I had a lot of people tell me it's okay to quit. It's okay to walk away from something that's hurting you so badly. Um, 
but I did it because I knew, I knew the reasons that I was doing it for. So, I guess all that to say is that God works full circle. He opened up that opportunity for me to go my last year of college, not take out any loans, not have to work an, an extra, extra job, and um, be able to have peace of mind. Track and field was so fun. We had a lot, we had so much fun, and I am so thankful for that opportunity. Um, it taught me a lot, and it is the reason I am who I am today, and I wouldn't change it for the world. So I hope you can get something from that. Uh, and I hope that you keep fighting these battles because you will win the war with God by your side. Thank you. Look at me. Thank you. I operate with God. I knew you had more to say. <laughs> it's wild. This moment right here, you're going to never forget it. And when other people hear it, it's definitely going to change and push people in a direction where they need to go. Yeah. I'm sorry you had to go through that. But I know it was for a good cause. Yeah. And you learned. Yeah. You are who you are because of this situation. Right. So moving forward when you see me, the respect, love, and appreciation is there. I don't care if you homeless the next time I see you. It's gonna be there forever. Yeah. And you better hope that I'm not where I'm supposed to be, because you won't be homeless no more, <laughs> you know? So, but, uh, God is here. Yeah. If you don't understand, he's here right now, he's here. Yeah. He's here. That was cool. I wasn't expecting you to say that, because I was like, I almost felt like I made it through. Like, okay, he, they didn't ask too much about, because the thought came in my mind, like, are you gonna talk about that is a big part of my um, my experience with sports in college, and I, I had that thought. And I'm like, I, I can't. It is so embarrassing. It is so the no, pain that it caused. No, no embarrassment at all. It's powerful. You don't you don't understand the power you manifest right now because of this story, and I'm sure you have several more. But this story right now. You talking about making an impact on people, changing lives, inspiring people? That right there. Don't run away from yeah. who you are and what you have. Right. Because you got it. It feels good. Yeah, no, I know. It feels I good to feel just good. like say it and just because that's also a thing that like when we talked about those people do know know that about me. But here, no one knows that because it happened right before I went away to school. So maybe some of those people know that I had that, but people here, no one, no one knows. And um, that's just one of those perception things as far as coming back here and keeping it quiet and just not letting people know that side of me and my experience and just, it's kind of a relief. Mm. But it's, it's, I think it's another step to my journey that God's been wanting me to admit and just talk about and get off my chest and not be embarrassed of it. Not, it's just, it's not who I am. It's just a part of my story. Don't and forget the most important thing is when you go back to your therapist, it's when you had a breakthrough. Yeah. Because that's what this is. It is. I appreciate it a lot. I do. No, I'm definitely sweating. <laughs> Good thing I wore black because, oh, whew, this is a workout.
in itself. <laughs>